So this is actually really interesting because you said that in medical school, they teach you that diabetes is not reversible. Is that right? Oh, the adage of once on insulin, always on insulin. Nobody gets off insulin. It's, it's a totally reversible disease. It's the end stage. You, you're now diabetic for the rest of your life. Absolutely. That's what I was told to tell patients and uh, send them to the dietitian for the American Dietetic Association diet. And that's all you can do for them. That's uh, what most primary care physicians are taught these days. So, and these days, but I, I graduated 45 years ago and they're, they're still being taught the same thing. So, so why do you think that is? I mean, is this uh, some? Is there like a large conspiracy to make sure that physicians don't have the tools to actually teach people how to reverse diabetes, or do they just not know the most current research that shows that diabetes is clearly a reversible disease? A combination, of, but there's no conspiracy. But it gets locked in that first of all, most physicians, if you ask them, will tell them diabetes is a disease of sugar metabolism. They're eating too much sugar, and it just overwhelms their body's ability to. to uh, metabolize sugars. They've got to stop eating all that sugar. And so, so put them on a low sugar diet. That's what they think diabetes is. Because after all, they're walking around with high blood sugar levels. They must be eating too much sugar. And, and it's embarrassing that my colleagues only look this deep. Yes, they have elevated blood sugar levels, but it's not from eating too much sugar. Those insulin receptors are all clogged up, so to speak, uh, with too much fat. And it's, uh, it's a deeper uh, issue than that. And like so many, um, uh, so many of the diseases we face these days, the uh, uh, from high blood pressure to clogged arteries, actually, if you don't mind, I can uh, show you on a uh, plaque that I have in my office here that I show my patients. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. And the second line is really important. It's been the food all along. You know, that, that's really the issue. And it's that high fat diet, it's the bacon and eggs for breakfast and the cheeseburger for lunch and the chicken for dinner and the pizzas and the ice cream and fat and sugar, fat and sugar, fat and sugar, day after day, month after month has detrimental effects in all the body, the arteries certainly, but certainly the, uh, uh, the muscle's ability to, to, to metabolize sugar is impaired and uh, the liver's ability to listen to insulin, that gets impaired. Uh, the fat, uh, you know, it's like putting thick grease or, you know, in every uh, moving part of your car. You know, it belongs down in the axle joints, but not everywhere else. And it winds up uh, clogging up some very, very important reactions. And, but my, but it, it, not to be too cynical, but it, it involves knowing and caring about what your patients are eating. And most of my colleagues do not care about what their patients are eating. They, they just never ask, take me through your eating day. I ask every one of my patients, take me through your eating day. What are you actually eating from morning to night? Tell me what you put in your mouth. Most of my colleagues don't ask that question, don't care, and they don't know what to do with the answer. And they don't understand how the Western diet causes so many of these diseases. So, um, so that's the real problem uh, because the, the doctors are eating this food themselves. They don't want to stop eating their filet mignon and their, their, their lobster thermidor and uh, all those good life foods they work so hard to, uh, to be able to afford. And so they're not going to tell their patients stop eating that. And right. hope, you know, maybe the dietitian will, but then you're not going to hear from the doctor. And if the doctor doesn't say anything, then the patient uh, doesn't, doesn't really hear. And, and that's, uh, that's the root of a lot of the problems.